Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps and this gloomy autumnal fall Friday video. I just got a bee in my bonnet today to make some candles. It's just that time of the year. I went to candlescience.com and I got a whole bunch of new fragrance oils from them that they have for their seasonal lineup. I got some Golden Brands 464 soy wax. I have some candle tins and wicks and all that kind of stuff and I thought maybe we should just make some candles together today. Now this video isn't sponsored. Candle Science has absolutely no idea that I'm making it. But most of the products I'm using are from their website because it was one-stop shopping, which your girl really appreciates. The first thing that I'm going to do is give a sniff test to all of the fragrance oils that I purchased. I will link them all individually down below if any of them sound like something you would enjoy. First up, we have Red Plum Baklava. So let's see what that smells like. Ooh, okay. Fruity Baked Goods. Excellent. One of my more favorited and treasured <laughs> scent categories. Next up, Pumpkin Souffle. I already know this is going to be good because I've used it before. Oh, yes. This is in my top three pumpkin fragrances for autumn is Pumpkin Souffle from Candle Science. There are a couple of other people who carry a Pumpkin Souffle. I know Brambleberry does as well. They all smell really, really similar. But for candles, I actually like the one from Candle Science the best. Black Violet and saffron. That sounds mysterious. Ooh, okay, so this is, as I said, a mysterious floral. There's definitely hints of violet in there. It kind of smells like a fancy perfume. Moroccan cashmere. I bet this is a very warm scent. Ooh, yes, it is. And there is a really, really notable spice fragrance in there. And it does kind of have that patchouli, sandalwood. This would be an absolutely amazing incense fragrance. Nordic Night. Ooh. Ah, pine. <laughs> This smells like fir trees and pine trees. That is really, it's giving me a whack of nostalgia. And I don't know why, because I'm not really ever around pur, pur or pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> per trees! <laughs> wow, I actually really like it though. Alpine balsam. Now, we'll see if sister likes this. I do. What? You guys know I love my sweet and fruity scents, but this is hitting, hitting a different spot for me. This is, hmm. This feels like something a fairy tale prince would put on for cologne. Smoked oud. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, not a fan of that. I know a lot of people would be though. This is kind of a smoke leather smell. Ah, that is one of the only smells that makes me slightly nauseous is leather. That is just not something I enjoy. However, again, I, I can see how this would be a really, really popular fragrance. I'm gonna go ahead and probably make a candle with it anyway. And then we have sugared chestnut. I know this is gonna be sweet. Hopefully it smells maple-y. Yes. Oh, wow. It actually smells really nutty. That's kind of a hard fragrance note to nail, in my opinion, is a true nutty smell. A lot of people just kind of substitute almond, I feel like, for that. So when you read fragrance notes and it's like, oh, banana nut bread, it really just smells like banana and then almonds. But this has a true authentic nut smell in with like a, a brown sugar or something. So that's honestly kind of impressive. Then I have two fragrance oils from AFI. We'll see if I have enough wax to make them. These are both Bath and Body Works duplication scents. So we have vanilla pumpkin marshmallow and pumpkin pecan waffles. Now those are two of my favorite fragrances in the autumn from Bath and Body Works. So let's see. That's a pretty good duplication. I smelled better. The Fragrance Buddy Pumpkin Pecan Waffles uh, beats it, and it smells exactly like Bath and Body Works. Let's try Vanilla Pumpkin Marshmallow. Now that is a dead-on duplication. Vanilla Pumpkin Marshmallow by BBW from AFI smells exactly like the one from Bath and Body Works. Okay. Those are my fragrances I'm going to be testing out today. Again, if you'd like to get them or you like the sound of them, they're all linked down below. Now, let's go ahead and open up our candle tins and start wicking them. Now, Candle Science has some extremely beautiful candles.
candle vessels, tins, and jars. But whenever I went to purchase everything, they were all out of stock. And I'm sure that's because everyone is making candles right now. But I'll throw up on the screen my first picks for the candle jars. Also, because I plan on giving these away, having actual tins, I think will make shipping a lot less hazardous. We will have to pack them less delicately. A lot of people carry these metal candle tins. And while all of them are relatively the same, one of the things that sets the ones from Candle Science apart is this wick placement in the middle of the jar. It helps you center your wicks absolutely perfectly without having a wick placement tool. So for wicking, I have some CD18 six inch pre-tabbed wicks. These are also obviously from Candle Science. And then I also have these handy dandy wick stickers. Now these are a must in my opinion with candle making because they're the only things that are gonna keep your candle wicks from moving around and floating around in your jars whenever you're pouring hot wax into it. So an absolute must. You open up your candle lid like this, put one of the wick stickers in the middle of the bottom of the wick, place it directly in the center, just like so, press it down, and ta-da, it's perfectly wicked. Now, to keep it from moving around in the middle, you can buy things to hold the wick in place. There's lots and lots of different options. Everybody has their favorite type, but because I'm just crafting these at home by myself today, I'm actually gonna take a clothespin, which of course you can buy at Walmart or the dollar store. Oops, this one's too small, hold on. <laughs> I have two different sizes, one for my bigger containers and one for my smaller ones. And then I'm just gonna place it like right here on top. So that's a very inexpensive way to get your wicks to stay in the middle of the candle jar like so no fancy equipment needed and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this to literally all of the candles okay so I have everybody all wicked up and I'm gonna set sets of two off to the side because I'm going to be pouring two jars at a time. And then I think after smelling all of these items, I really do like this vanilla pumpkin marshmallow the most, so I think I'm gonna pour him first. Now, most of these candles, I'm actually going to make shimmering candles. I don't know exactly like the technical term. Whatever you like to call it, you make it all the same way, which is to take a little bit of your favorite glittery mica, and this time I'm gonna be using some sparkle sunshine, and a little bit of poppycock and I'm going to put them in the wax and then I'm also going to put a little bit on the tops after it has set up for a little while so that as the candle burns you're actually going to see all of that shimmer. It just makes for a very very pretty aesthetic. Now before I can do anything I obviously have to go melt down my wax and I also want to make myself a pumpkin coffee so why don't you guys come with me? You can uh, watch me make my coffee and watch all the wax get ready and enjoy the little autumnal montage.
right, so I have my candle wax here. I'm gonna see how hot it is. It's around 190 degrees, so a little warm yet, but I'm still gonna go ahead and add some of my mica. Now, I am being careful how much I'm adding. I'm not adding too much because mica doesn't blend with the wax. It doesn't break down in there, and if you add too much, it can clog up your wick. So I don't want that to happen. I just want a little bit of shimmer through the candle. And then after the candle has set, we can actually add it in on top and that'll look super, super sparkly and shimmery. You can see I only added a teeny bit and look how sparkly and pretty that will be when the wax melts. And actually, because I have time, I think I will go get some candle dye. I know I have some out in my garage. I'll have to go look through the buckets and see what I can find. Okay, so here's what I have for dyes. I have a whole bunch of like little brambleberry dye chips. And then I also have some just regular old candle dye. Now, because it's pumpkin pecan waffles, I am gonna do this one orange. I'm just adding in two drops, which will be ample, <laughs> ample for this amount of wax. Even though I'm always surprised with certain types of waxes, how differently they color, it takes a lot more color to get soy wax to turn the shade that you want than it does for paraffin wax. You should always pay attention to the flash point on a fragrance oil. The flash point is whenever the fragrance actually starts burning off because it's so hot. So you would never want to incorporate this particular one above above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna start burning your scent off, but you wanna make sure that you're actually not putting your fragrance in too cold because then it doesn't bind super well to the wax, but not too hot because then the fragrance burns off. So this wax is sitting right around 160 degrees, but the pouring temperature is 130 degrees. So I'm just gonna let it sit there and cool down and mix up my next batch. Okay, let's do the red plum baklava. I'm going to mix some different colors together. So the first one I'm using is blackberry purple. This is from Brambleberry. Just gonna put a couple of those in there. Woo, those are, those are really pigmented. I wonder if I just added too many. I thought, oh, oh goodness, yes. Okay, I feel like that's perfect. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do is add a few more violet purple pieces. The shimmer I am adding to this one is called Superstar Shimmer Violet Mica. It's from Fizz Fairy. Oh yeah, that is the perfect addition. You can see that purple in there. Oh yeah, so pretty. It says this is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The flash point for this is 200 degrees. So I'm gonna let it sit for about Oh, I'd say 10 minutes or so till it drops 20 degrees-ish before adding anything to it. Okay, next up, we're gonna be doing the black, violet, and saffron. So, the first thing I'm going to do is add two drops of this black candle dye. We'll see how dark that gets. Yes, very nice. Then I'm also going to add in a little bit of this violet purple because I don't actually think the black will stay that black. So I'm just gonna add some of those in and I bet I'll be able to tell. Yeah, I can. It will be really hard for the camera to see anything, but I promise there's a difference. I'm also gonna add a little bit of this shimmer. Yes. We'll have to put some silver rainbow eco glitter on top of that one. Check the temperature. 192 degrees on this one, so a little bit cooler. While we're waiting for the other two to cool down, our pumpkin pecan waffles wax is ready to pour. So I'm just going to pour gently on the sides. Then I'm going to scrapey scrapey my little container here. And now that they are poured, I'm going to be very, very careful. And I'm gonna place them gingerly inside of one of my soap molds here. That way I can transfer them easily between places since I don't have room for all these candles on my table while I'm still trying to make them. Okay, now I'm gonna place this in a different area. Whew, 
That made me nervous. So this red plum wax is at 180 degrees. So I can go ahead and add my fragrance oil to that. Ooh, that smells so good. Now let me say this. Candle Science is one of the best suppliers, I personally think, for candle fragrance oils. They really, really do just try to cater to the candle community a ton. And I think it really, really shows in their fragrance oils. I have never used one of their fragrances that didn't have a great hot throw in candles. The wax is down to 164, but I need it at 130, so I'm gonna set it off to the side to wait a little while. And our black violet wax is down to 180, so we can pour that in. I can't wait to see how this smells as I mix it, because that red plum baklava has like filled up my room, just been mixing it in. Oh my gosh, ah, this is doing the same. It smells so fantastic. Okay, let's do pumpkin pecan waffles next. So I think I'm gonna do a yellow for this. This is called Golden Yellow from Brambleberry. Ooh. I'm gonna add the teeniest bit of King Tut. And because the wax is at 180, I can go ahead and add our fragrance oil as well. Ah, uh, yes, it smells so good. All right, everything is mixed in, looking nice and shimmery. Still too hot to pour though, so off it goes into the waiting corner. Okay guys, last one that I will film because I have so many to do. This is going to be the Alpine Balsam candle. So I'm going to add a little bit of shimmery emerald green from Fizz Fairy. Again, just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. About yay much. The rest we'll put on top for pretty. Then we're going to add one drop of this green candle dye and then a couple little pellets or maybe just one big one of sage green. That's from Brambleberry. Let's see what color this is going to end up being. Now that I've mixed it all, I'm going to drop a little on this wax right here and then we'll let that harden up. We'll see how dark it is. It could be that I wanna darken it up a little bit. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and make all the rest of the candles and then I'll show you guys a close up of all of them nestled together looking so cozy. So here they are in the little soap molds and they've been sitting for about two hours, I'd say. Some of them are gonna have to be cleaned up and I'll, you know, smooth the tops off. I really like these. I had a few little jars that I got from Brambleberry and I filled those up, but yeah, they smell really, really good. And on a couple of these, I've already gone ahead and put the mica on. You can see that I put some bio glitter on these. I only use bio glitter for stuff like this. I also had a little extra of the, what is that? The oud, smoked oud. I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> I had a little extra of that. So I poured it into a mold and then I just put those little stars in there for funsies. But yeah, I'm going to let these sit for like, gosh, maybe three more hours, three or four more hours. I just want to make sure that it's hard all the way down because if it's not, then I'm not gonna be able to put the mica on top and it's not gonna shimmer correctly, but look how pretty they all are in their little, in their little box, little, little sleeping box. Okay, so I have the Alpine Balsam candles. You can see a little bit of the shimmer in there. I feel like the color actually turned out really, really good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the mica. So I'm going to be using some of that shimmery emerald green from before and taking a little brush here. This is still a relatively fresh poured candle, so I am being careful. And instead of dragging the mica, I'm trying to kind of pat it in It'll look a lot smoother if I do that. Okay, I did this whole thing with a little brush, but I think it might actually be better with a bigger brush. Okay, let's try, let's try this. Oh, well that goes a lot faster. <laughs> Honestly, gets better coverage too. Um, yeah, 10 out of 10 would recommend a bigger brush. I also feel like, you see all these little teeny tiny scratch marks around here? 
I don't have as many whenever I use that bigger brush. Okay, so now that these are all covered up, I'm gonna go put them back in their little box and we'll do another one. So this one is the Vanilla Pumpkin Marshmallow. This is what we poured first. So I'm just gonna take some Sparkle Sunshine and put that all across the top, just like this. This is kind of a bigger size, so it's gonna look a lot more sparkly. Ooh, look how good. Ah! Now, here's a couple you actually didn't watch me pour. I scented them with this Volcano Capri Blue type, so it's a duplication of those Volcano candles. And I'm actually going to cover the top of this in a little cocktail of mica colors. So I'm gonna start by spritzing some Sparkle Me Red. Then I'm gonna spritz some Sparkle Me Blue. Then I'm gonna add some of that violet that we added to the inside of a couple of the other candles and then I'm also going to add some blue pearl then I'm just going to dust the top all around lock in all those colors that looks super cool do you see that shimmer Ooh. Now these are the violet and saffron candles and they're looking a little bumpy on top so I'm just going to take this heat gun right here and I'm gonna add a burst on top so that the tops will flatten out. Can you guys see some of the mica there as I melted it down? Oh, so cool. I'm going to add a little bit of Sparkle Plenty on top while it's still a little bit waxy. I'm also going to add some Silver Rainbow Eco Glitter. This is from Brambleberry. Awesome, and then we'll just let those tops harden up a little bit more. Now I'm going to do variations of the examples that I just showed you on all of the candles, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right guys, it is multiple hours later and all of the candles have their glitter or mica on top. So they're super sparkly, they look so good. I went ahead and made 12 different labels just using Photoshop. All I did was put royalty soaps and then the name of the candle and then the fact that it's a soy candle on these. And then I'll put warning labels on the bottom of all the jars. I printed these on weatherproof glossy paper from onlinelabels.com. I've used online labels for many, many years and they're amazing. I made these kind of skinny so that they would be a little bit easier for me to place. It'll end up looking something like this. Wow. <laughs> and then finally, because I've already snipped them, the last thing to do is to put the lid on them. This Alpine Balsam one is so pretty. That green on top from Fizz Fairy, just a delight. Ooh, yes, looky here. There's the front, there's the candle. Now it's gonna take me a hot second <laughs> to get all of these labels on. Um, so let me do that and then I'll stack them up for you guys to see the finished product. Now, also, before I burn any of these, they do have a cure time. The longer you let them sit, especially with their lid on, uh, the better they're going to smell. But I will show you guys an overlay right now, two weeks later, so that you can see exactly what a mica shimmer candle looks like. They burn so beautifully. It looks so pretty all the way down. It's a super, super easy effect to do, and it just makes just a huge difference. It can take any just regular old plain candle and really snazz it up and add something really, really cool for whoever the recipient is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Labels are on. This is my little candle tin lineup. I love it. I am so happy with these. Well, guys, thanks for hanging out with me while I made these uh, candles today. Oh, they smell so good. I've got about 30 candles or so with those little extras that I made. I'll probably end up keeping the little ones because I'm not 100% sure I picked the right wick size. And I have to test a couple of these. But then the rest of them, I think what I'm going to do is with the Fernwood Fall Collection launch, 
the first couple of people who use the coupon code that is on screen now, essentially it'll be a first come first serve coupon code. And if you make an order of $50 or more, you could just get a free candle with your order. Cause really the whole point of today was for me to get to enjoy the fall weather and make some candles. So I will give these away. If you use the coupon code again on screen, obviously supplies are very, very limited. First come first serve, but yeah fall candles and stuff. I wonder if I should make more of these for Christmas. Should I do another Christmas candle making video? You'll have to let me know. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, like making some candles. I'll leave as many links as I can below to all of the ingredients that I used. If you're wanting to do this exactly as I did it, then you're gonna need some CD8 wicks. You'll need this exact tin from Candle Science. And then I was doing batches of 12 ounces. So I was melting down 12 ounces of wax, adding in one ounce of fragrance oil, and then various colors and stuff just to make them fun. Most of the glitters that I use today are from the Good Glitter and Fizz Fairy. And, and then I had a couple of micas on top I used from Fizz Fairy and Mad Micas. Again, I'll try to link as much as I can. So yeah, make some candles, make yourself some, some squash soup, pumpkin soup. I don't know. I've only had it once, but it was good when I had it. I don't really care what you do. Just be sure you do something fun for yourself today. Have an amazing day. I hope you guys are feeling the fall and I will see you guys in the next video. So until then, bye for now. Oh, also let me know if you liked that little montage with all the music and stuff. Cause if you did, that was actually really fun to film and I will do it again. Okay, now bye for real. Neil. Psh.